So, Russell Brand. Everybody's got an opinion about Russell Brand today. And once again, all of the opinions that are getting pushed by the algorithm on Twitter are complete horse shit. Once again, everyone has been made to feel like you have to choose one camp or the other. When you can sit happily on the fence like me, I'm not impartial in this. I like Russell Brand. I've always liked him, well, except for those couple of years when he went a bit funny and started breaking into banks and stuff. That was cringe, the Ed Miliband interview. And that's what we've got to change. That is exactly it. That is exactly it. Cringe. But generally speaking, he's somebody I like. I've liked him ever since he did Big Brother's Little Brother and Russell Brand's Ponderland. Would you not like to go and work somewhere like the Inland Revenue? That's not an incentive for an adolescent! <laughs> Would you not like to work at the Inland Revenue? They were the original reaction videos. He was the founding father of the reaction video genre. I also really like his YouTube channel. I like the way he discusses topics in the news and gives a very nuanced and balanced approach like myself. So I really don't want these accusations to be true. So for those of you who don't know, five women have come forward uh, accusing Russell of S.A. and Rappé in incidents that occurred anywhere between 10 and 17 years ago. Channel 4 did a little documentary about it which came out last night. And here is my problem. Everybody is falling into the two camps, as I said at the beginning. Or so it seems, on Twitter. You've got Russell Brand himself. And all of those who defend him, who hate the mainstream media, saying it's a coordinated attack, and the only reason they're doing it is because he's questioning the narrative. It's become too big a problem for the establishment. It's not until he started spitting facts on COVID that they decided he had to be got rid of. And then you've got the other sickening side, where people are celebrating it. They desperately want him to be guilty of this for some reason. They don't like him, they see him as a conspiracy theorist, they lump him in with Alex Jones or Donald Trump or people like that. My last words on Russell Brand, Katie Hopkins is backing him, GB News is backing him, Beth Turner is backing him, I don't need to add anything to that! And so therefore, guilt by association, he's guilty, send him to prison, I don't care if it's true or not. You need to fucking stop! It's too much! Everybody is losing the ability to think about anything for themselves. Let's first of all start by listening to Russell Brand's response to the accusations. Let's get into that, okay? And then we'll we'll go from there. Hello there, you Awakening Wonders. Now, this isn't the usual type of video we make on this channel where we critique, attack, and undermine the news in all its corruption, because in this story, I am the news. I've received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an email, one from a mainstream media TV company, one from a newspaper, listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks, as well as some pretty stupid stuff, like uh, my community festival should be stopped, that I shouldn't be able to attack mainstream media narratives on this channel. But amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question is there another agenda at play? Particularly when we've seen coordinated media attacks before, like with Joe Rogan, when he dared to take a medicine that the mainstream media didn't approve of. And we saw a spate of headlines from media outlets across the world using the same language. I'm aware that you guys have been saying in the comments for a while, watch out, Russell, they're coming for you. You're getting too close to the truth. Russell Brand did not kill himself. I know that a year ago there was a spate of articles. Russell Brand's a conspiracy theorist. Russell Brand's right wing. I'm aware of news media making phone calls, sending letters to people I know for ages and ages. It's been clear to me, or at least it feels to me, like there's a serious and concerted agenda to control these kind of spaces and these kind of voices. And I mean my voice along with your voice. I don't mind them using my books and my stand-up to talk about my promiscuous, consensual conduct in the past. What I seriously refute are these very, very 
serious criminal allegations. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. Now, I don't want to get into this any further because of the serious nature of the allegations, but I feel like I'm being attacked and plainly they are working very closely together. We are obviously going to look into this matter because it's very, very serious. In the meantime, I want you to stay close, stay awake, but more important than any of that, if you can, please stay free. My initial thoughts upon hearing what Russell Brand said there is that he comes across as quite honest, quite earnest, quite open, quite transparent. But then again, that might be my bias playing into my interpretation of what he said. After all, I want him to be innocent. And it's certainly true that he's always been very good at speaking. Really, all this hinges on whether or not the accusations are true or false. I don't think it helps his cause when he starts talking about coordinated attacks. But he might be right, God knows. But when he starts saying that, oh, look at how they came after this person and that person, I don't think that does him any favours, even though he might be right. But that's not the only other option. I mean, it could be uh, the case that these women that are accusing him are embittered ex-girlfriends. Or women that tried to blackmail him in the past and that didn't work, so now they're taking him to court. I don't know. God knows. There are a million different options. It could be true. What I will say about the accusations that I've seen from what I've read in a couple of articles and what I saw from the Channel 4 documentary is that there is only one of the accusations that really seems extremely serious. And I don't mean to say that the others are not serious, they're really a lot less tangible. Four of the five women that are accusing him are, are accusing him of weirdness, exposing himself, being inappropriate, using his influence to groom. There is, however, one woman who fully accuses him of the rapé, the R, the big R word. And that's the one that I'd be most worried about. And she says she has text messages to prove all of this. I haven't seen those messages. However, there do seem to be receipts for what she's accusing him of. She went to a clinic after she says what happened happened. She was then in therapy, talking to a therapist about the assault. That to me is the most worrying one. Let's just listen to her very quickly. Nadia met Brand at a party and subsequently had consensual sex with him. On another occasion, she alleges, he raped her. I was out late and he happened to call me and say, I've had a really bad day, please come over. And I, at first I said, no, I'm not going, it's late. And he's like, please come, just come and cuddle with me. So then I gave in and I'm like, okay. He pushed me up against the wall. I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I have a friend here and I, I want you to come into the bedroom. I'm like, no, that's not happening. We're not doing that. And I tried to get away from him. And at this point, he's grabbing at my, my underwear, pulling it to the side. I'm telling him to get off me and he won't get off. And he has that glazed look in his eye again. I was very distraught, trying to get out of the house with him being so much taller than me, like holding me up against the wall, pushing himself in me. I couldn't move. That same day, Nadia went to a local rape treatment centre to report what had happened. She underwent tests, was given antibiotics and emergency contraception. But she says she couldn't face going to the police. When I went in for one of my first therapy sessions, I literally couldn't say the word. I had to keep saying sexually assaulted, but... By the end of it, I was like, oh my God, he hit me. So if that's true and there are records of her going to a clinic and attending therapy and those sorts of things, it's, it's very worrying. Apparently there are also text messages between her and Russell, of which there are records and they've been shown to the journalists of her telling Russell that what happened was unacceptable, that no means no, etc., etc. But we shall see. I just think you have to reserve judgment for the time being until we've actually seen all of this for ourselves. Innocent until proven guilty, right? Oh, and by the way, there's another kind of person that's giving their opinion on all of this. The clout chasing whores who are coming out to defend Russell Brand. For just a few more seconds in the dwindling limelight, they're past their prime, they're used and abused, and bless them, they're coming out to say, I had a lovely time with Russell. <laughs> 
which is kind of, uh, this is one of them. Um, I actually know who this is about and I have the receipts. I was contacted in June by a journalist uh, regarding a video I made uh, about a certain celebrity and a weekend that we shared together. The video is kind of viral, uh, it's on my page somewhere if you want to go see it. And that certain somebody was, as most of you will be aware, Mr Brand. They weren't going to use my story because it didn't fit the narrative for their documentary. Because he wasn't an asshole to me. <laughs> But here are some of the messages. Obviously, I will take out the person's name and stuff. We had a phone call. She contacted me for more information and I didn't contact her back because I kind of felt like it would be mean. Anyway, there you go. Put your bets on. It's a documentary about the one and only Mr. Russell Brand. I don't doubt the testimony of this fair young maiden. With gnashes like that, I'm sure Russell still bears the uh, battle scars. <laughs> and there are a lot of women coming out and saying stuff like this. I had a great time with Russell, which is lovely. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't prove anything. It's just a bit sad. Imagine if you're married to one of them now. As soon as they see a story about Russell Brand, I fucked him! God, Cringe! I don't know what's happened. I, I don't know. Nobody knows. But what's undeniable is, is this. Uh, and just a fun fact. Astrology-wise, the lunar nodes of destiny have shifted into Aries right on top of his Mars and Moon. Written in the stars, baby. Okay, bye. Well, there you go. A damning indictment or something. I don't... That's a thing. Now you know. What a time to be alive. Uh, we shall follow this story and we'll see how uh, how it goes. I'll catch you in the next one. Like, share, subscribe, and all the rest of the stuff that uh, helps this clout-chasing whore reaches 100,000 subscribers. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. The fuck off, you boring bitch!